Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Dr. Jamil Fassin, a postdoctoral researcher in applied swine nutrition at Kansas State University. So Jamil, would you mind telling me a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, thank you, Clayton, for the invitation. I'm, I'm Jamil Fassin. As you said, I, I'm currently in a postdoc role at K-State with the swine nutrition team. Uh, I'm from Brazil. Uh, did my vet degree in Brazil, worked for four years in BRF, Brazil Foods, uh, in Brazil, and then did my master's and my PhD in Brazil as well. And then uh, in the last year, came to the U.S. to do a postdoc in swine nutrition. Great. Yeah. And I know you're, not, you're very familiar with podcasts since you actually do the Portuguese version of our main podcast. But um, so I read about your recent vitamin survey where you surveyed a bunch of different production facilities and looked at industry averages. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the, the, uh, the vitamin and trace mineral survey that we conducted. Uh, basically, we started last year in November of 2021. We started uh, reaching out to nutritionists from uh, production companies and also some uh, nutrition supplier companies uh, trying to update. Uh, uh, a survey did by Josh Floor during his PhD at K-State in 2016. Uh, uh, we would like to update the, the levels and try to see if there's any new trend in the vitamins and trace mineral uh, 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 in a research standpoint or something that is becoming more popular, uh, uh, the use of some of the specific vitamins or trace minerals. And then we started to, to reach out to these nutritionists. And then uh, uh, we ended up with uh, around 4.4 million cells uh, survey, uh, survey uh, related to the nutritionists that they work for, uh, the company that they work for. Uh, for these 4.4 million cells, we had 37 uh, participants, 29 production systems, and eight nutrition, nutrition supplier companies. That corresponds to around 72% of the uh, U.S. cell inventory. So we can, we raised the, the number of cells uh, and 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 nutrition nutritionist participants in this survey compares to the compared to the uh, 2016 version, and uh, yep we got the information even uh, the nutrition the nutritionist could share uh, even the the their premixes and the hand ads since this is a complete diet based survey this is very important because we are not just uh, uh, having the numbers or the values of, or the specifications uh, uh, of the premixes, but also the hand ads. Uh, for example, we have uh, choline uh, uh, and also some other trace minerals. That is not the goal today since we already published the, the, the vitamin portion of, of the survey. So we, we asked them to provide us like uh, the premixes and also the hand ads of the vitamins. So we have uh, most of the time choline, uh, vitamin D, for example, uh, in some companies added by hand, uh, not added in the premix directly. So, uh, yeah, and then we had all this information and we split all this information in a, 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 in a production phase base. So we created three production phases for nursery, three for finishing. And also we have gill development diet, gestation, lactation and boar diets. And uh, we want to, to walk through all the, the production phases. And in some cases, also we have uh, we send the spreadsheet of the survey to the nutritionist, and then they send back with all the specs uh, filled out. Or in some cases, we have some uh, phone calls, interviews to have these specs. And then after that, we we gather all this information uh, in a huge spreadsheet, and then we start uh, building some graphs and trying to analyze either the average, the median, the the the, the size of the variation in each one of the vitamins, in each one of the production phases. And we ended up with some interesting results. Uh, uh, most of the results similar to the, to the ones uh, found by Josh in 2016, uh, uh, but some interesting ones uh, like the variation some, somehow uh, impacted us. Like uh, we see like as an example, for vitamin A in the nursery, we have companies using uh, 3,000 international units in the first nursery phases, and we have companies using 15,000 international units, so five times when you compare like the minimum and the maximum. So that's something that shows us uh, uh, 
well, it's important to 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 mention here, Clayton, that we don't have any uh, uh, analysis or comparison or correlation with uh, uh, performance. So we are just having the 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 aspects of the vitamins. We're not comparing and trying to uh, uh, relate with uh, better or, or lower performance. But the idea here is to is really to say that we, you you can uh, uh, raise pigs with a huge amount of variation uh, uh, in each one of the vitamins. But it's very important to know, to say also that in ninety five percent of the cases, uh, talking about all vitamins in all production phases. The nutritionists are supplementing uh, well above the NRC. So we have some specific vitamins in some specific uh, production phases that uh, we are supplementing very, very close to the NRC recommendation. But in the majority of the cases, for example, as I said, uh, 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 these 15,000 international units for vitamin A for nursery is really well above the NRC. We can say like close to eight times uh, depending on the phase, but seven to 10 times the NRC recommendation. So when I was looking at the table and seeing where they kind of, where are the, where they fell some were obviously like vitamin A fed a lot and some were even fed a little bit lower in the NRC. So do you think there was any negative effects that could have occurred? Obviously, like you mentioned, this isn't a study on performance, but really a survey. Um, but do you think there was any negative effects that can occur from feeding too much of certain vitamins in certain production facilities or too little of certain ones? Or how did how did those look to you? Yeah, this question kind of comes along with the with the lack of knowledge that we have in the vitamins uh, uh, in general, I would say. In the last years, we kind of have some new uh, research coming uh, uh, and, and uh, more close to the liposoluble ones like vitamin A, D, E, and K. There's some more recent research on this one, but the lack of knowledge kind of shows us uh, 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 that we are playing basically under a margin of safety way. So we kind of use uh, high levels in some, of the, in some of the vitamins, but we are accounting for some losses. And also because when we, when we are using the vitamins together with the with the with the trace mineral premixes, we have some uh, 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 lower stability and lower availability of some of the vitamins. So we are kind of playing this game with the market of safety. Of course, if you go to some uh, uh, vet books, uh, veterinary veterinary books, and then some uh, 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 cases in the in the swine production, you 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 see or you read some uh, toxicity uh, uh, related to some of the vitamins. But also, I, I, I think that we are more uh, uh, afraid of having deficiency than toxicity. So because of that, we are supplementing uh, uh, higher levels. But that's one really good point that uh, uh, you brought. And I think that we can uh, uh, mix this lack of knowledge, this uh, maybe this excess of some vitamins. But the idea is that we are comparing these levels to the NRC. And where the NRC information comes from. This is a, a very uh, important uh, uh, information to have. And then we, when, we, when you read the, the chapters in the NRC, uh, you probably will see, like, for example, when you are talking about cells, uh, gestation or lactation cells, uh, they mentioned that you, you, uh, there are some uh, uh, reproduc reproductive related vitamins like choline, folic acid, and biotin, for example. But when you go to the references of uh, these recommendations, they are from the 70s. So, uh, and then you go to this uh, 70s papers, you see that there's like a, a few cells, uh, some responses that they're not even uh, talking about uh, uh, birth weight or, or sturdiness of the cell or robustness. They are kind of showing some specific uh, 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 blood marker that show that can improve these in the immune system. So something like that, it's, it's hard to use only this sole this sole information to recommend a level. So we need to, to be aware that we are comparing our levels to DNRC, but there is a lack of knowledge in most of the vitamins in DNRC. Uh, for example, we have thiamine uh, uh, and in my research here, the research that I'm aware about, the the last research done in thiamine was like a 20 years ago. So now we have different pigs, different uh, 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 farms, different ways to produce uh, pigs, different nutrition. So, and and you can ask me, so why we are not 
doing research environments, and probably it's something that uh, uh, you are aware also that uh, uh, the, the, the portion of the diet cost that belongs to the vitamins is so low that when you are uh, uh, in a jungle playing with uh, soybean meal prices, uh, corn prices, so the vitamins come in the, really in the bottom of the pyramid. It's not, it's not the, the highest priority ever. So uh, uh, due to that, I think we have tons of other things that comes before the, the research in, in, in vitamin levels. And then if we can play in this safe way, like with this margin of safety, so uh, 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 we won't pay that much attention. But uh, indeed, we need to have more knowledge around the specific uh, uh, levels of each one of the vitamins. And I think that this vitamin provides this information, at least if you want to, to design a trial or a dose response trial, for example, uh, using the, the current levels that the industry is really using is something that we need. Like if we do a titration of a specific vitamin during nursery, uh, can we find any uh, interesting result? So I think this is the, the, the next step. So what are we going to do with this data provided by this survey? Right. Yeah. And with as cheap as they are, it's always easy to just throw more in there just in case. So yeah, I can understand them being as high as they are. Um, well, like you said, I mean, I mean, also, yeah, pigs change have changed a lot in the last 20 years. Um, so would you expect from this research or any other research you've read any significant changes in the next NRC? Or do you think there's still kind of a lack of research on that to really make any major changes? Yeah, yeah. Good question. Clayton. I think so. Yeah, I think that, uh, well, the last version of the NRC is 2012. So we are talking about 10 years uh, and in this uh, 10 years or a little bit more years, if you consider like the NRC coming uh, soon, uh, we probably will have at least in some uh, liposoluble vitamins more and more information. Like vitamin D is one of the ones that we are more seeing. Some studies, uh, maybe not maybe, but of course because of the increase of lameness in the field, and also because vitamin D, for example, is the cheapest one. And, uh, and, and you can see, for example, if you, if you take a look in the data, you see that we have in the nursery 10 times the NRC of vitamin D, seven times the NRC in the finisher phase, and around three times the NRC for, uh, uh, or 300% the NRC for uh, uh, breeding herd. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that we, we're going to have some interesting updates for the next NRC. Most of them will be related to the, the as I said, the liposoluble vitamins, but yeah, in general, we'll probably will we'll have some uh, 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 updates in all vitamins. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought that was just concluding. I thought that was really interesting to just kind of see what everyone's feeding at and kind of see how you can almost how your farm can almost stack up with some of the industry averages because that's like you said about seventy. What was it? Seventy two percent. Seventy percent. Seventy two. Seventy two percent of the sows. So. And to finish here, Clayton, I, I really want to say thank you for all nutritionists that provided uh, uh, the information to really build this survey. Uh, uh, this survey was uh, uh, really built by them. I just put together all the inf this information. Thank you very much for, for their help. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming on the show. And a big thank you to them as well for providing that information to you. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.